Hi, thank you very much from Douglas Tackle World to give you the fish report uh, for the Gold Coast offshore for the 27th and 28th of March. Okay, uh, we had a lot of rain last week and consequently the water is absolutely filthy and the mackerel that were biting well in that nice crystal clear blue water are now taking cover underneath that brown <laughs> slurry uh, somewhere down the bottom of the ocean. So they're there, you see them on the sounder, if you guys went out the last couple of days and they can see them on the sounder, but they're just really hard to get them to bite. There are a few guys that are getting them down deep on down riggers or just at anchor and got live baits out over the top of the school and dropping them down quite deep in amongst the few mackerel that are around. The mackerel will start to bite again once that water clears up and they will continue to uh, come back from the migration south and then we get that double whammy effect on the way back as they head back north again. The spotties I'm not quite sure on. I think they will still be here as well. Um, I've caught spotties on the Gold Coast in June, you know, it's like 10 degrees and freezing and uh, the water temp's about 20, but we've got so many, it's, it's uh, incredible. So you never know, you just gotta wait until the day, but be prepared and be ready to, to go try for them. Um, but at the moment, um, that dirty water's pushing out to about 60 metres and uh, the wahoo that were here with the mackerel, again, as I said last week, there's so many wahoo. Um, I'm guessing they pushed out on that dirty edge of, that meets the clear water. That may be along there feeding, they'll probably be bait there, so they'll be feeding on that edge. Or they like a bit of cover, like a bit of rock or reef or whatever with, that holds a lot of fish and food for them. So they may have moved out onto the 36 fathom reefs uh, all the way from Jumping Pin down to, say, Burley or Tweed. So if your plan was to go and try to catch some wahoo at the weekend, I'd probably hit him the, the edge of the dirty water versus the blue water, and not the dirty water versus, uh, against the green, but the green against the blue, okay? Go that bit further. And, um, or add along the 50 Fathom Reef as well, so troll down along there. Um, the happening lures we've been selling lots of the last few weeks, two weeks since we got them in, um, are just big jet heads like this type of thing here. Uh, these type of things are extremely good. Um, we rig them up on wire, just a short wire trace, maybe around that size. So around uh, 750 mil at the most. And they're running about a 9 0 hook in there. Uh, the wire's about 275 pounds all the way through, or 250 pounds all the way through. And the um, best thing to do is to troll that at about 12 knots. So if you've got a flybridge boat or a boat that's got a bit of a step up, when you look back at that small lure, it's making a bubble trail like this big and looks about that, that big in size. So any pretty decent wire, who's gonna try and hone in and just smash it? Um, because it oh, it's a big jet trail that it makes, or bubble trail. Uh, other things are working quite well too. Again, this is another lure, new lure coming today. Um, it's very heavy, it's a bit like a bonito head, with a skirt on the back, again, high troll, Troll job, high speed. Um, all these lures were trolling at 12 knots, okay? Long way back, 100, 120 metres behind the boat. 50 pound tackle at least, and uh, and your drag at that speed has a quite a fair bit of um, pressure on it, so it doesn't pull the line out. And that when the fish hits, it's, it's a very fast strike. Don't slow straight down, you slow down slowly, um, and then work the fish back to the boat. You've probably got at least 300 metres of line out by the time you slow the boat down and actually get into the fish. So make sure you've got plenty of line on your reels, okay? Um, other high speed lures for Wahoo, we've just got these in this week as well. They're, we've had the x Extreme, but these are new 3D models. Um, they're very high definition, um, they're called 3D uh, HD, high definition uh, Rapalas. And these are troll ups of 20 knots. And they're really good um, for trolling in close and running two skirts over the top of them, about another 50 meters back behind them. Uh, that's just sort of your troll pattern. Uh, the other thing that I've, that's really come on the last two or three days is the snapper. And the snapper um, have been pretty thick on the 24s and the 18s and because of all the nutrients in the water and the dirty water um, and a little bit of current happening, um, they're really on the chew. And um, like quite a few guys, I've got a few photos that come in today and yesterday, a fish around that 65 and 70 centimetre size and other guys tell me they've just been absolutely smashed on the bottom on float lining pillies down or on plastics and even micro jigs. Uh, so it seems to be anywhere on the 24s or the 18s straight out the front on the pinnacles there off the seaway. Um, 
So plastics have been working really well. Um, these are a new, another new lure we got in just um, today. Um, they're a Gillies uh, prawn and they're unrigged. So you'd rig that up on either um, a weedless type hook and get it right down to the bottom and work it along the bottom. Or you would um, put a jig head on there, probably around half to three quarter ounce, six o hook. It's a quite a substantial size. That one actually glows pretty hard in the dark. And, uh, and get them really happening. And, and I believe you cast those up current because it is prawn season now, as we all know, and just slowly hopping back towards the boat. I reckon the, the snapper just absolutely smack these things. Um, but offshore, out further, 36 fathom reefs, a few snapper there. Um, the 50 fathom reefs had some friends with there yesterday. They got a uh, really nice size amberjack. They got smoked by a couple of good fish on, on the bottom. Um, they got some snapper up to around sort of 60 centimeters. It's a good parrot, uh, some pearlies, uh, and trag. So it's like a mixed bag, half filled the rescue and had a great time and got some beautiful fish. The current was running about two knots. Um, I looked at the current chart uh, this morning and it's dropping off by about Monday a little bit. So by sort of late or mid Sunday, it should be around about 1.2 knots, hopefully. Um, if you get any northerly wind, they obviously get to push a bit faster on the top, but that's what the general current will be running at by Sunday afternoon. Um, out further, there's definitely uh, the odd blue mile and that out at uh, Jim's Mountain and Riviera Grounds. And uh, you want to be trolled on with big skirts, sort of eight to 10 inch minimum, uh, and obviously 50 to 80 pound tackle. And there's also a bycatch of big dollies. If you guys got dollies there two weeks ago before that rain comes through, up to about 20, 22 kilos. So a good sized dolphin fish uh, and some really big wahoo as well. So, if the weather is as good as they say on Sunday, Saturday's not too bad, but Sunday looks the better day. Um, it might be worth maybe just venturing out a bit further if you if you know that ground area fairly well. The deep dropping out there is just starting. The currents, as I said, starting to drop back a bit. So obviously um, there'll be cod and blue eye and all the usual out there, which is a great fishing. I just love that sort of fishing. Uh, it would be definitely worth a go. The pearl perch, um, Seen. I normally start fishing pretty hard from mid-April, so another couple of weeks um, they'll really start to kick in along that sort of 80 to 130 metre area, 150 metres, and um, th this is the time of the year we, that you, they really kick in, so uh, sort of mid-April to early June. You'll get them all year throughout winter as well, but that's the best time, so give that a shot. Um, the only other thing I did this weekend, if there's a bit of westerly in the wind, you can try fishing for, um, there will be tuna, even if the water's dirty, there'll be tuna and tail and, and uh, bonito and stuff like that schooled up uh, close to the shoreline. So there'll be a lot of bait pushed up against the beach with this dirty water and there'll be, uh, the Wesleys just seem to make it all happen. It brings the bait to the top and the fish, the tuna especially, really come on the chew. Uh, so casting metals into those would be fantastic or trolling small skirts that are in about 10 knots, okay? Um, so yeah, give that a shot and, um, and see how you go for the offshore this weekend. I wish you luck and just be safe out there. The swell's not too bad and the tides are good again early morning. Tide tide around about, um, I think it's around 8 in the morning, 7.30. Just one last thing too is uh, that um, it, if you um, are capable of fishing at night time, I'm sure you've done it before and you know about it, um, it's full moon on Monday. So maybe be chasing dewies um, the next couple of nights uh, on the local reefs, on the 18 fathom reefs. No doubt with all that dirty water, the rain and whatever happening, the jewelries will be on the chew. Thank you very much.